The recent test launch of SpaceX's Starship marked a significant moment in space exploration and geopolitics as it became the largest spacecraft ever to achieve orbital velocity despite ending in a fireball. This has silenced many of their critics. After years of being deemed impossible, SpaceX has demonstrated that they are still on track for their journey to Mars, while also intensifying the space race with major powers, particularly China. As soon as word got out that the Starship test had made it to orbit and lasted an hour, China has announced their plans to deploy space planes the size of Boeing 747s into Earth orbit. Instead of using rockets, though, Beijing intends to develop an advanced railgun that'll literally shoot Chinese space planes into orbit at extremely high speeds. While China has been heavily invested in both sending their people into space and developing railgun technology, the timing of this announcement following the historic Starship orbital test highlights the escalating tension in the new space race between the U.S. and China. Moreover, beyond China, other adversaries of the United States, such as Russia, alongside Iran and North Korea, have developed and are continuing to develop highly destructive space warfare capabilities, causing strategic instability. Beijing openly talks about implementing a strategy of space dominance, while Russia is preparing to deploy nuclear weapons into orbit as part of a plan to use nuclear explosions to disable a large number of U.S. satellite constellations. Both China and Russia also dream of dominating the moon before Americans can return there. In the face of these urgent situations, the U.S. military needs to do something to stabilize everything, or in other words, arrange everything back to its original position. Since World War II, and especially during the Cold War, U.S. military doctrines prioritized unquestionable superiority. It's not merely about being powerful enough to defeat any potential adversary, but positioning the U.S. so that competition is virtually non-existent. This dominance has historically relied heavily on technological superiority. For instance, the U.S. boasts the only functional fifth-generation fighter aircraft with two models, the F-22 and F-35 in production and more being developed rapidly. While other nations claim to have similar capabilities, they're generally considered to be lagging behind by about 20 years. However, not all technological areas are as clear-cut. In certain specific fields, the United States faces fierce competition from adversaries and could potentially lose its dominant position at any time. Enter SpaceX. The company represents a significant technological edge, with the closest competition being the entire Chinese launch industry. While SpaceX isn't the sole player in the rocket launch business, it holds a substantial lead over around a decade over its closest rivals. The Department of Defense recognizes this advantage and wants to maintain it by investing in SpaceX. They see an opportunity to continue the trend of American tech outpacing the competition. Whether it involves ambitious concepts like deploying space marines via Starship in under 30 minutes or not, the crucial point for the DoD is that they perceive investing in SpaceX as a relatively modest yet highly effective means of preserving U.S. dominance in space and aerospace. In the past, they have contracted SpaceX to investigate rocket cargo transport, i.e. moving military materials quickly around the world using a Starship launch vehicle. However, Gary Henry clarified this latest application for Starship that goes beyond that plan, and it seems unlikely moving boxes of munitions could be described as a very specific and elevated risk, as such transfers are routinely handled by commercial airliners. This suggests that the DoD is interested in leveraging Starship's extended capabilities, potentially deploying it in Earth orbit and even venturing into cislunar space. One of the most probable operational zones could be Geostationary Earth Orbit, or GEO, where there's ongoing competition among U.S., Russian, and Chinese satellites. Typically, activities in GEO involve signal intercept or SIGINT operations conducted by specialized vehicles, often referred to as snugglers which approach communication satellites to monitor their broadcast signals. Alternatively, it could entail inspections by stalker vehicles, performing close visual examinations of satellites to assess their operational purposes and capabilities. Undoubtedly, these unwelcome intruders could be swiftly eliminated using anti-satellite ASAT weapons. However, such action would result in significant amounts of kinetic debris, posing a risk to the strategically vital satellites that are permanently positioned above the U.S. Therefore, a non-destructive intervention approach is preferable. 
This could involve utilizing lasers to disrupt a stalker's cameras or employing radio jamming to prevent smugglers from relaying intercepted communications. Certainly, there is no evidence to suggest that the U.S. is engaged in such commitments, but they certainly possess the capability to execute such a mission. To facilitate this, the U.S. military operates the autonomous spaceplane X-37B to advance reusable spacecraft technologies and space situational awareness. Recently, SpaceX launched the X-37B aircraft aboard their Falcon Heavy rocket into a highly inclined elliptical orbit. This orbit periodically intersects with a geostationary orbit, presumably to monitor activities in that region. Overall, it appears that the DoD desires SpaceX to develop a specialized variant of the Starship upper stage, akin to the X-37, but with significantly enhanced capabilities tailored for proactive interventions, if required. Presumably, this variant of Starship could be launched by SpaceX from their existing facilities, with operational control later transferred to the DoD once safely in orbit. This approach of compartmentalization seems to offer an ideal solution for secure Starship operations. SpaceX manages the technically challenging launch phase, then hands over control of Starship to the appropriate authorities for the operational phase. Undoubtedly, SpaceX would prefer not to be involved in the potential legal ramifications associated with the activities of this specialized Starship variant. Major General Eric Felt, Director of Space Architecture at the Office of the Assistant Secretary of the Air Force for Acquisition and Space Integration, emphasizes the potential need for government-owned and operated assets. If we can buy the commercial service, that's what we're going to do. But there might be some use cases where there needs to be a government-owned, government-operated vehicle, and that transfer can happen on the fly. So, if Starship were to be used by the DoD, how would it expand its capabilities? Firstly, it would significantly increase payload capacity. While the X-37B has a relatively small payload bay requiring additional service modules for space experiments, Starship boasts a payload capacity of 200 tons and an internal volume of 1,000 cubic meters, opening up a plethora of potential missions it could undertake for DoD. Let's say you have a satellite and you launch it and something goes wrong. Starship has the capability to open its payload bay, either bring the satellite back in, close it, pressurize it, work on it, or redeploy it. If you want to see how your satellite's doing or if you're getting interference in the GEO belt, maybe you want to go up there and take a look at your neighbors, see if they're cheating or not. Starship will basically allow people to work and live in space and deploy technology that has not been able to be deployed. It's an 8.5 meter diameter fairing. Big, big, Gwyn Shotwell, SpaceX COO, said. After successfully executing manned missions, any satellite repair test could also be carried out within Starship. If a satellite cannot fit inside Starship for repair, the vehicle could instead deploy an expandable habitat similar to Sierra Space's life habitat. This approach effectively enables the DoD to operate its own space station in GEO, reflecting its growing interest in such capabilities over the years. Starship could also conduct patrols of the strategically important GEO belt, allowing for the interception of snuggler or stalker satellites in extreme circumstances. The Starship could act like a mini-aircraft carrier in space, sending out different types of drones for tasks like refueling satellites, bringing them down from orbit, or boosting their power. In a worst-case scenario of a direct flight, just one Starship could seriously mess up an enemy satellite system, quickly taking down satellites that took years to put up or maybe even replacing them later on. In summary, through SpaceX's recent historic Starship launch, we've glimpsed the importance of this colossal spacecraft, not only for humanity, but also as a powerful tool of the world's foremost government, the United States. Despite SpaceX's third flight ending in explosions, its future remains hopeful. Let's wait and see how Starship owns the skies. And that's all for today's episode. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.